in the previous video we have covered the chapter respiration and we are moving on to the next chapter in this video if you haven't watched that one please watch that first the main thing in respiration was taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide so in this chapter we are going to study how oxygen and carbon dioxide circulate in our body so the chapter's name transportation in animals and plants so the general idea is this we take oxygen in with the help of our lungs from lungs the oxygen moves into heart the heart pumps oxygen to all parts of our body because oxygen is the main source of energy to all parts of our body to function properly so this is the main thing the oxygen from atmosphere comes into our lungs from lungs into our heart and from heart into all parts of our, of our body all our body part gives out carbon dioxide this carbon dioxide comes into our heart and heart pumps the carbon dioxide into our lungs and we exhale the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere so this is how the circulation works in human beings and in most of our animals so now the main question is how oxygen and carbon dioxide is transported from one organ to other in our body we have a bo bodily fluid called blood and blood transports various substances from one part to other so now the question is how does the blood carry various substances blood is composed of fluid called plasma in which different types of cells are suspended for example like red blood cells rbcs which contain a red pigment called hemoglobin in human beings rbc is present and rbcs contain red pigment called hemoglobin which gives red color to our blood so that's why when you have an injury red colored fluid that's blood comes out and hemoglobin also does another work that is it transports oxygen to all parts of the body and collects carbon dioxide from all parts of the body and give it to heart from heart the blood carry carbon dioxide into the lungs from lungs into the atmosphere let me summarize the thing hemoglobin has two works to do the first one is it gives red color to our blood and second one is it transports oxygen to all parts of our body from heart and it collects carbon dioxide from all parts of our body and give it to heart and that's why hemoglobin is most important in human beings our blood also contains white blood cells that is wbc and it fights against the germs that may enter our body when bacteria and viruses enter our body our immunity with the help of wbcs fight against these things have you ever wondered when there is an injury or cut the blood will stop flowing after some time so what's the reason why the blood stops it's because our body fluid that is blood contains another type of cells that is platelets these platelets form clot in the injured place and stop the flowing of blood so till now we have learned three things about human blood first one is red blood cells that contains red pigment called hemoglobin that gives red color to our blood and the second one is white blood cells that is wbc that fights against the germs bacteria and viruses that enter our body and the third one is platelets that is the reason why there is a formation of clot so that's all about the important types of blood cells now we shall look at the blood vessels so how this blood flow in our body as i have told you before blood transports oxygen to all parts of our body and collects carbon dioxide from all parts of our body so these two processes occur simultaneously in this process if blood containing oxygen that is oxygenated blood mixes with blood containing carbon dioxide that is deoxygenated blood then that blood is of no use so it is important in our body to keep oxygenated that is blood containing oxygen separately from deoxygenated blood that is blood containing carbon dioxide so we have two separate veins that is arteries and veins for transportation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood so there are two types of blood vessels arteries and veins arteries carry oxygen rich 
blood and veins carry carbon dioxide rich blood now understand this pictorial weave and you will understand the whole topic first the oxygen from atmosphere is taken into our lungs from lungs the oxygenated blood that is blood containing oxygen is given into our heart through pulmonary veins pulmonary veins transport oxygenated blood from lungs to heart what is the function of a heart heart pumps the blood so heart pumps the blood to all parts of our body through arteries arteries are like pipes through which the blood flows to all parts of our body in the diagram you may see that arteries are further divided into many branches so they are capillaries as i have told you all parts of our body including every tissue requires oxygen so arteries are divided into branches to reach all the tissues so these branches are called capillaries so this completes half of our cycle the oxygen from atmosphere enters our lungs and from lungs it goes into our heart through pulmonary vein and heart pumps the blood through artery into all parts of our body so this is all about oxygenated blood that is blood contains oxygen so now the oxygen from blood has transported into all parts of our body now our body parts give out carbon dioxide now the same blood has to carry carbon dioxide but it cannot go in the same way that is through arteries because oxygenated blood will be flowing through arteries so it has to find another way that is veins veins help in human body to carry deoxygenated blood that is blood containing carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide rich blood flows like this from all parts of our body the capillaries carry deoxygenated blood and combine to form a vein this vein acts as a pipe and that connects to your heart now the deoxygenated blood that is blood containing carbon dioxide reaches to your heart through veins now the carbon dioxide in your blood has to be exhaled so heart pumps the carbon dioxide rich blood into your lungs through pulmonary artery so pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood from heart to lungs in lungs the carbon dioxide from blood is separated and exhaled through nostrils so this is the process how oxygenated and deoxygenated blood flows in your body separately and simultaneously you may think that there is so much complex processes going on in your body and you can't feel anything so here no, is an experiment wrong. to experience that you can feel that. the blood press the middle and in your finger of your right hand on the inner side of your left wrist you can feel some movement in that part so this movement is called pulse you may heard a doctor saying a person died because of low pulse rate so what is this pulse rate the number of beats per minute is called pulse rate so check your pulse rate keeping middle and index finger of your right hand on the inner side of your left wrist a healthy resting person usually has a pulse rate between 72 to 80 beats per minute so try to figure out your pulse rate looking into a clock and also the pulse rate of your family members then you will get a better idea how this pulse rate works so in the last like 10 minutes we have studied the flow of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood and our heart plays a major role in this work from lungs it takes oxygenated blood through pulmonary veins and it pumps the oxygenated blood to all parts of our body through artery and it receives deoxygenated blood from all parts of our body through veins and give it to lungs through pulmonary artery so now let us study human heart how does it work and what is the structure of a human heart so the definition of a heart goes like this the heart is an organ which beats continuously 
to act as a pump for the transport of blood which carries other substances with it heart is a major organ in your body if heart stops you die as i have told you if oxygenated and deoxygenated blood mixes that blood is of no use so we have two blood vessels that is arteries and veins and also i have told you that both the process of transport of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood takes place simultaneously so heart has to separate oxygenated and deoxygenated blood so our heart has four chambers in it in those four chambers the two upper chambers are called atria and the two lower chambers are called ventricles there is a partition in between four chambers that helps to separate blood rich in oxygen with the blood rich in carbon dioxide now let us understand the structure and function of a human heart see in the picture on your screen the human heart has four chambers right atrium left atrium right ventricle and left ventricle the oxygenated blood from lungs enters through pulmonary vein to left atrium from left atrium it moves down to left ventricle from left ventricle it moves to all parts of our body through aorta and the aorta connects to the arteries so as i have told you before the oxygenated blood from heart moves through arteries to all parts of our body so the blood rich in oxygen moves from left ventricle to arteries through aorta and the arteries divide into capillaries and connects to every tissue in our body now the blood rich in carbon dioxide has to be supplied to heart at the top of a diagram you can see a pipe that is vena cava the deoxygenated blood that is carried from all parts of our body is connected through veins and it connects to vena cava and this vena cava gives deoxygenated blood to right ventricle from right ventricle the deoxygenated blood is pushed by heart to right atrium from right atrium the deoxygenated blood is given out through pulmonary artery to lungs so this is the cycle and how this is how a human heart works now i will summarize you the whole thing the oxygenated blood from lungs come to left atrium through pulmonary veins from left left atrium it moves on to left ventricle from left ventricle the oxygenated blood is given to all parts of our body through aorta the deoxygenated blood from all parts of our body is connected through vena cava into right ventricle from right ventricle the deoxygenated blood is pushed to right atrium from right atrium the deoxygenated blood is pushed to lungs through pulmonary artery so this is the cycle it may seem like a complicated thing but if you look at it for four to five times you will understand in it's there is no complication first learn the names of all parts of our heart then try to remember the cycle you will understand the whole thing easily now let's move on to the next topic that is heart beat you may wonder why the doctor use stethoscope to check our heart beat what's the use of that so when doctor listens to your heart beat a doctor can get clues about the conditions of your heart by listening through stethoscope even you can make a stethoscope in your home just take a small funnel of 6 to 7 cm in diameter fix a rubber tube that's around 50 cm long tightly on the stem of the funnel as shown in the figure stretch a balloon or rubber sheet on the mouth of the funnel and fix it tightly with the rubber band now put the open end of the tube on your ears and the funnel end on your ha- heart you can listen the heart beat so now that's a basic stethoscope you can use and you can enjoy and try to figure out the heart beat per minute and compare it with your pulse rate So that's it for the part 1 video of transportation in animals and plants. We will cover the remaining portion in the next video. So until then bye bye. And one thing, don't forget to like, 
comment, share with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Sign or it's transfer. Signing off.